Hey! <laughs> What's up, universe, that I only update super sporadically and when I somehow find time and that's very rare, so you know, what's up? How you doing? But today I am coming at you hot because I'm back in Vancouver after being in Calgary for oh, like five days and while I was there I ended up switching out my old broken lens for a new lens that is exactly the same as the old one but no longer broken. So I figured I'd show you the brand new versus the old as well as use this as inspiration as a rundown of all the gear that I have because it is a question that I get all the time including the little accessories and how I achieve certain look. I figured it's just pretty easy to show you each lens that I use as camera and then everything else. So here's that. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you the two lenses that are in theory identical. <laughs> So, uh, uh, this is the old one, my baby of roughly seven years that just barely missed the warranty, but at this point I think I've done some really stupid stuff with it where I don't think it would have mattered. The thing that really, really kicked me in is the hardware in here for sure is gonna fall off any day, and I just didn't want to risk it. I do like a lot of pretty um, ambitious things with photo and video in general, yeah, it was time to just like, you know, get something new before having to like stop a whole shoot. And then the filters laid on top of it are stuck on there. And the reason they're stuck on there, oh lord, because I was walking across the road from a shoot and then started running because I saw a car was coming and hit a pothole, broke my ankle, and then smashed the lens because I was carrying it on my shoulder here and it shattered in that way. And so the UV shattered, the lens did not shatter, but it broke into the lens, so now it's permanently on there. So then now there's like a UV on top of the shattered as well as a pro mist on top of that. So it created this vignette that I just kind of learned to deal with for the last, I don't know, two or three years. And it really didn't do anything wrong with the lens, it's just like now the hardware is, the fact that you can hear that is just a problem. So the brand new one, Still has its original stuff. Hardware is clean. The whole freaking thing is clean. Like, yeah, the comparison is non comparable. Like, you can actually see the inside of this lens versus this one, which looks like a black hole. First and foremost is lenses uh, 35 Sigma 1.4 Art Series. I'm a sucker for Sigma, they're the only lenses I use. Then the other lens, which is actually on here right now, I'll uh, insert some footage, is a 14 1.8. For me, I really like shooting wide, and I ended up getting it for things like drum cam or uh, huge <laughs> venue stuff with the crowd and everything. I just really like the way it looks. It's super crisp, like one of the most crisp lenses I've ever used, even though the distortion's like quite wild, like right here. I'm sure you can see like all here looks really weird and like around the sides barrels out a little bit, but like for barreling, I think it's one of the better ones for if you're not doing it stylistically, it holds its own pretty well. So I'm super down with the 14. And then actually earlier today, a friend of mine returned a lens that I had let them borrow, well borrow, I sold it to them like almost four years ago. And it is a Canon, my only Canon lens. And I got back today. A 15-1.4, um, still pretty good. Needs to be dusted out, classic stuff. But I haven't used it in a long time. I'm excited to do some portraits with it again in the future. And then I guess the main body that I use is best to explain, even though you can't see it at the moment. It is a Mark 5D4. Um, yeah, I've had it for about three years. I used to shoot with a 60D. I just don't anymore. Uh, the Mark does like everything I want with it. Maybe one day I'll shoot with mirrorless, but just like not what I feel like doing right now. It is very heavy. I have a super heavy setup between like the 14 and the 35. They're both very heavy lenses and the body of the four is very heavy too. So imagine that, like I have a lot of wrist issues and back issues. That's for sure not a question or a doubt. It is just a thing that I have to deal with. I do have a gimbal that I use, a Crane 2, and I will say it is hard, like the motor does like to kind of whip out on me every once in a while using the 4, especially with the 14, it just doesn't happen. I just don't use the 14 anymore. And I think that'll actually be the nice thing about using the 50 is it is a lot lighter of a lens and maybe I'll be able to use some of the things that I wasn't able to do in the future. 
So I kind of lightly touched on this where I use filters on my lenses. I do like to use the cinema filter of the Pro Mist 1 4th and 1 8th. I really like having hazy images that like, not necessarily that they're out of focus. I obviously really like my sharp focus here and there too. It's just, I like that softness that it brings in with the light, especially with live shows. That's the reason why I started using it. And then getting more into like film and video in the last couple years, it's definitely helped with that too. Not only having to rely on a haze machine or a fog machine. So that's, I got the, the Typhon one, Tiffin, whatever. Uh, this is the one four. It is the one that I currently am using on my 35 because I will not be able to get the one eighth off of my old 35. Like I said, it's stuck. Um, but yeah, they're like a little over $100. Uh, definitely kind of like an investment thing. Um, I do like having them a lot. So that's why it works for me. And then this is, one of them, I do have the full package of the different star sizes. I haven't used this in a couple years, um, but I do have these star filters that are really good for shows too. I just realized I started overusing them a couple years back, so I decided to quit using them. But it is something that I do use every once in a while, as I'm sure you can see through the samples right now. So here's kind of the fun stuff, I guess. A little LED light that I can control with my phone, but it's just as easy to control without, so yeah. Obviously I've been using a lot of red light lately. Ooh. Um, so it's on that, but you can control the hue and everything on there. And it's really fun to use. Um, I will say my one quarrel with it is it's harder to see when there's light. Obviously mixing any light can always be kind of a battle, uh, but it is better to use when it's completely dark. You'll definitely get a better usage out of it. But yeah, super handy. They also have the small on-camera one that you can use, but this one's great because it has the magnets on the side and it comes with the 3M double-sided velcro super capable you just charge it it's the same plug as my phone so like a USB-C uh, very handy I don't know just always have it charged up and ready to go whenever you decide you might need a light for something I think this is the thing that I get questions about the most if you're a photographer especially in the music community you probably are super familiar with these both like the the home hardware Home Depot sort of instrument as well as fractal filters themselves. So this is the case for fractal filters. Um, I used to borrow friends on tour because I just couldn't justify spending $100 until one day I did. Um, so there is the different types I'm sure that you've seen. I have one of the newer ones where this is like more of a Pac-Man where some other people have it where it's more curved out. Lots of fun to use, less fun to take on planes. I've heard of people having to get their snaps, should not be able to take them, literally just get thrown out. I lucked out where when I was in Winnipeg, they asked me what it was and I was like, oh, it's for photo. And they're like, well, you should probably use this like underneath the carriage next time. And I was like, oh, I never do that. So I just didn't really think about it. And luckily um, they used my stupidity to my benefit and let me take it. It was my first time taking them on a plane. So now I kind of know not to do that. The other thing that I carry in here, which I'm sure you can see is this fun little guy. You know those circles that are always going around on my images, it's my favorite thing to use. This is the thing that I use, a little one and a half inch copper pipe. Um, I know people use different variations of pipes. I used to have a one inch and it was like two inches long. I didn't find that worked as well. I, I do like this one, it's like the perfect size. So when I'm shooting, I tend to be holding everything like this and I have it on my fingers. So it's really easy to just like pull out and then start doing that. I definitely am not the first person to think of that for music or wedding or anything photography. The first person I ever saw use it was this guy named Brian McCain. Uh, I believe he's somewhere in like the Southwest United States. My whole thing is just trying to find perfect framing and this really helps me frame out images. And now like obviously I understand it can be kind of a gimmick for a lot of people, but it's something that I've always loved for framing and everything. And it is a nice little set rather than having a basic image. It's nice to just to have both as an option, which is why I use it. The last thing I guess in terms of gear rundown is my Polaroid and instant film photography stuff. I'm not gonna go through all the different cameras that I have with it because I don't really think it's worth it. The one that I have here is probably the one that I use the most and like what I try to stay in line with. This mint Polaroid, <sighs> wow. Um, this is like, it was a dream camera of mine. I would always see it on the mint website and like fantasized about having this camera for such a long time, but I could never like think to myself, I have enough money to just like buy a nice manual Polaroid until I went to the camera store to like rent and then 
drop off these lights and I saw it in their showcase for clearance for 50% off. And this camera, I believe, runs roughly 1300, especially when you convert it into Canadian, it does get up there. And then at the camera store, it was like 569, I believe. So I kind of like went home, thought about it, and instantly ordered it to my house that day because I don't think I would have ever seen it for that inexpensive without having to deal with the shipping costs. So uh, I will show you this very quickly. It is my baby. I do have the box still for a reason. It is my favorite tool in photo ever. There is this little thing called a time machine made by Mint where it lets you do everything manually, which is what this is. Uh, and you just pop it in on the top, similar to any flash that you would use for an SX70 flatbed. Pop it on, there you go, fits in perfectly. Yeah, it, it's really great. Um, obviously it's a typical 70s, so like the focus is down in here and then the exposure here. And then I just use the light meter app on my phone to figure out all this. It does team, seem to expose a little bit higher. Yeah, I kind of like readjust for that. I've tried to do it like inside and outside and it's kind of all over the place. It is really good to use a tripod for them my baby. Well, thank you for enduring this like super quick, probably me talking too fast gear rundown of what I'm using. I figured while I got this camera lens, <laughs> I might as well just like share a little bit of everything. Uh, it is really nice to finally like refresh it. That's my quick little rundown of like gear and accessories of things that I use. And hopefully that's a little bit helpful if you've ever looked at my page and been like, what are you using? What is that? Because I know I definitely get that question probably every time I leave the house with my camera. So thank you for enduring all of that. And I hope that I see you whenever I decide to upload a gam. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, bye.